Okay, human cloning. Human cloning is not just a possibility, but it is very much a reality. For those of you wondering, human cloning is nothing new. It's been taking place for quite a while now. It's just that the majority of the general public is not aware of it. DNA splicing, human bioengineering, goes all the way back to the very start of this second Earth age that we are presently living in. In fact, the very first bioengineered human you could read about in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26, when properly interpreted, that verse states that the Elohim, the fallen angels, created a creature in their likeness and image. This creature was made out of flesh and blood, bones, guts, and all that icky stuff. It's not the same Adam as the one mentioned in Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7. The Adam of Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7, he was made out of different substance and material. Adam of Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7 was made out of dust, fine dust from the ground, collected and gathered by the good angels. And he received the breath of life. He received the soul. And he was created by the Heavenly Father, Yahuwah. Okay? So, the Adam of Genesis chapter 1 is not the same as the Adam of Genesis chapter 2. You must understand that. The fallen angels created the Adam of Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26. It was made from male and female DNA. They are male and female in one body. For example, you might have a male pre-Adamite body with a male reproductive organ, but you might see feminine characteristics in that body of that bioengineered human. It might look a bit feminine in certain aspects. Also, you might have a female with a female reproductive organ that is not the same type of race from the Adam that the Heavenly Father created. And this female, it might be female in gender, but it might look like a man. This is because it is made in the image of the fallen angels, which are male and female. They pass their DNA to this creature and it's kind of made in their image and likeness. And what they did was they were splicing their DNA with the DNA of a primitive worker, a primate. And this is where your Bigfoots come from, your Sasquatch, your Cro-Magnum, your Neanderthal, your Homo erectus. They were messing with this template until they developed their creature into an advanced version, which is Homo sapien, and it looks more human. See, nowadays you wouldn't be able to tell a clone from a real human. That's how far they come along in their nefarious activities, cloning, bioengineering, all of that. They had thousands of years to perfect their craft. Okay, so they created these bodies of flesh and blood. Scripture says, Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of heaven because it is corruption. These bodies are corrupt, created by the fallen angels when they got kicked out of heaven. They were sent to these lower realms, the 3D realms, where they manufactured these bodies that the Heavenly Father speaks against so heavily. So when Adam transgressed, he lost his immortal body, got sent to these lower realms. He was clothed with the flesh and blood body made out of bones, guts, and all that icky stuff. And he was given the death sentence once he died, passed on to the rest of humanity once you die. Depending on your behavior here on earth, you either go back up to heaven where you came from or you go down to hell. So yeah, we're falling into these bodies that we have today. These aren't the bodies that the Heavenly Father created. Now, He created them in order to 
serve the death sentence. But these bodies are made organically, the ones that the Creator creates. They are organic. They are brought about through the union of a woman and a man. Conception, birth. That's why Scripture says that you cannot see the kingdom of heaven, cannot enter it unless you are born of water in the spirit or something to that extent. The water referring to the birth canal when the woman is getting ready to have her baby. Her water breaks first, then out comes the baby. The water, the spirit, you got to have the Holy Spirit and have those commandments and laws of the Heavenly Father put in you so that He can know where you're going, that you are of Him and for Him so you go back up, all right? So that's the backdrop on the origin of bioengineering, DNA splicing, human cloning, all that. It's nothing new again. This has been going on since the start of this second earth age. Now, how do they clone individuals? Well, what they do is they take DNA samples. They take cells from a person and they put them inside these containers filled with water that you see here on the screen. They wire these containers and they charge them with electricity. And these cells grow into a fetus. From a fetus, they could grow into a child. From a child, they can grow into a teenager. From a teenager to an adult, a young adult. And from a young adult, they can go and turn into a full-grown adult. Now, depending on the desired size and age, they could keep this clone young or they can make them old. Again, it depends on what type of clone they want to manufacture as far as gender, size, and age, and appearance as well. So they got it down the pat. They mastered this cloning. They had thousands of years to work on this, so it's hard to tell a clone from a real humans nowadays you know most individuals won't be able to tell the difference unless you know what to look for okay so also their clones or they their creation their creature mentioned in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26 again it's male and female so their sexual preference is both they like both men and women this is also where the gay, homosexual, lesbian, bisexual agenda is coming from. It's coming from fallen angels. They pass their DNA to their creatures, so these creatures are kind of devious in their sexual preference. So, yeah, they're unisex vessels, transgender vessels, male and female in one body. Okay. What else? Oh, yeah, they conduct their nefarious activities below ground. That's where they do the cloning. They have a lot of clone labs underground. It's a rarity that you'll find a clone lab above ground. It has happened, but mostly they relocate it below ground where they can conduct their nefarious activities without being disturbed and without being caught. Okay, this is from the movie Event Horizon. This is a movie that gives subliminal messages, letting the viewer know that they are cloning people below ground and in some cases above ground. Here you see the clones inside these water tanks, artificial humans. And this movie is riddled with all kinds of subliminals. It even has subliminal messages on the realities of hell. That's for another video. But again, more cloning, water tanks. They clone different humans, different colors, black, white. You name it. And here you have more clones inside these water tanks. Containers that house the clones. And that develop the fetus for the clones. Which then can be altered according to whatever the desired size, age, appearance, and gender of the clone might be. 
Here you have animals inside these water tanks. These are animals whose DNA has been spliced with that of other animals, thus producing all kinds of monstrosities, which in some cases are found above ground by normal humans. And when they find these monstrosities alive, the humans sometimes kill them and take pictures of them. Sometimes they are found dead, and humans still take pictures of them. They reveal them to the general public. And the powers that shouldn't be like to dismiss these things as hoaxes because they don't want people finding out about their nefarious activities. Here you have a brain inside the water tank letting you know that they also harvest body parts for different purposes. Here's a sketch of human cloning. You have a fetus in the middle tank baby-sized clone and on your right you have a full-blown woman with breasts and a female reproductive organ and on your right side of the screen you have the wicked doctor programming the female clone and the baby clone as well Here's another screenshot of individuals being programmed. This is the latter stages of cloning. Sick stuff they got going on here. I'm not sure if this is from a TV show or a movie, but the thing is they're telling you what it is they're doing through subliminals, through subtle ways to portray their nefarious activities. But the majority of people are sound asleep. They think that everything they see on TV is make-believe. This here is from the Illuminati card game. Yes, it's called Illuminati card game. I mean, it couldn't be any more obvious. And this card game came out back in 1995. Again, the card game was letting you know what they're doing. Cloning humans. And this game also predicted 9-11 six years before it actually happened. I made a video about that. Predicted the events of 9-11. They have a card in this game that has a plane smashing into the Twin Towers of New York City. This card game also predicts and predicted a lot of the events that are happening during our modern day and age. Here you see a woman with an evil look, clone, soulless, possessed by a demon. And they use these clones as sex objects. Yes, they are deprived. Whatever DNA is used for that clone, that's how the clone is going to come out. Okay, this is also from the Illuminati card game that came out back in 1995. This card here says, Clone Arrangers, Tank 23. I mean, it couldn't be any more obvious. They were telling you, even before the times we're living in now, when all the cloning exposure is beginning to come to the surface i mean cloning was taking place way back when but this card game came out in 1995 they were letting you know even back then what they were doing here you see a human clone inside a container being produced and manufactured same way all the other clones are engineered and produced. Here's another card from the Illuminati card game. Head in a jar. What does that tell you? It's letting you know that they are harvesting body parts, brains, you name it. Okay, here you have an Illuminati card that says Hitler's brain. Letting you know without any doubt that they are harvesting human body parts. Especially the body parts of famous individuals that once walked this earth. 
here at the bottom of the card it says unique artifact see they consider the brain a valuable body organ because they can download the memory of the brain and use it to pass it on to the clone that they are engineering and producing so it could act a certain way it could behave a certain way same way Hitler behaved his mannerisms all that his memory his data if they take the information from his brain download it and pass it on to another clone then you have replicas a whole bunch of Hitlers running around yeah forbid Again, and the card game is proof that what they're doing is very much true. Do you have the eyes to see, the ears to hear, and the mind to comprehend these things? Because they're putting it in your face. Here's Hitler's brain inside a container. Okay, here's Obama, who is suspected of being a clone of Akhenaten. An Egyptian figure of times past. And he very may well be a clone. Some say that he has George Bush's DNA in him. That he's a clone of Bush. I've heard that as well. Who knows? All right, here's Vladimir Putin to your right. The president of Russia. To your left, you have Julius Caesar, Caesar. And Putin is suspected of being a clone of one of these Grecian, Roman, Edomite tyrants of the past. Again, here you have Mr. Putin to your left, the president of Russia. To his right, you have Julius Caesar, Julius Caesar, the ancient Roman tyrant that lived back in the day when the Roman Empire had just rose to power he might be his clone who knows they do look alike okay here you have Sylvester Stallone who looks like Pope Gregory the ninth it's not a coincidence that they look alike it's very much a possibility strong possibility that these celebrities you see on screen today are copies of individuals that once walked this earth and they send these freaks out in order to deceive the people into idol worship because that's what these clones are soulless vessels with nothing but a demon or demons in them leading people astray all right here's Mark Zuckerberg to your left well known for his social media site called Facebook to your right you have his lookalike Philip the fourth of Spain and Mark Zuckerberg actually looks like one of those Grecian tyrants from the past yeah he's got a punchable face right more doppelgangers here you have Christian Bale that last name of his Bale it's pronounced Bale spelled B-A-L-E and the way you say it is B-E-L, which is the name of a pagan god mentioned in scripture, Baal. He is an anti-Yah, false god, scripture speaks against. Also, the title Lord means Baal, or Baal. So it's not a coincidence, this individual comes from roots that are connected to these fallen entities. In fact, his first name, Christian, that word right there, or that name, means idiot if you trace it back to its original meaning. Idiot Bell. Ha! <laughs> uh, not so clever with it, huh? Archons. 
your creations here are sporting names that are dissing yours. <laughs> okay, so he looks like an individual that at one time walked this earth. As you can see, he has a beard that looks just like him. The guy on the left looks like Christian Bell. And yeah, I believe that these are tares, the tares that scripture speaks about. These are demons. They keep popping up. And since we are at war with them, they got to show up once in a while to try to deceive the masses into idol worship, you know. They give them these positions of fame, popularity, until they kill off their clone, their character, and they go do something else or pop up after a few amount of years when people forget about them or they think that people will forget about them. Sometimes they get plastic surgery in order not to be recognized. I mean, it's crazy. They're crazy. Here's another look-alike, Justin Timberlake. He looks like this individual that at one time lived back in the days. It doesn't have a name for him. It says that he is an old-time criminal. I mean, the resemblance is uncanny. Again, one has to speculate are these individuals being cloned throughout time? Or are they traveling back in time? Which I believe they might have the technology to do that. I can't say that for a certainty, but for sure they are being cloned. No doubt about that. They could be descendants of these individuals that look like them. And these individuals that they look like might be tied to their family line and their lineage could be tied to the demons and the fallen angels. Who knows? That's why you see them on TV. Most people you see on TV are not just normal human beings that get there through hard work, no. These people that you see on TV, the majority of them are there because they are connected to the fallen angels and the demons. I could assure you of that. And here's Jack Black, who looks like this individual here to your right, Paul Revere, who once walked this earth back in the day. They look alike a little bit, not a lot. But what's up with the pose? I mean, is that a subliminal? Are you trying to tell us something, Jack? Are you trying to tell us that you're a clone of Paul Revere? Talk to me. But yeah, these lookalikes. You can't help but wonder if there's a connection. Here's a picture of Orlando Bloom to your right. And on your left, you have Nicolay. And I don't know how to say his last name, nor am I going to try to pronounce that. But, man, they do look alike. Maybe he's a descendant of this Nikolai. Or maybe he is Nikolai, only he's reappeared as Orlando many years later. Could be a clone, demon, who knows. But yeah, Orlando Bloom is best known for his work and The Kingdom of Heaven, I believe. That was a movie he appeared in and the series of Pirates of the Caribbean with Johnny Depp. Yeah, but don't trust anybody you see on TV. Most of them are spawn of devils. Okay, here's Keanu Reeves to your right. Well known for his role in the movies The Matrix. To your left you have Paul Manette. Who is an individual that lived back in the time of the 1800s I believe. So yeah he looks a lot. Could he be a clone too? Hmm. 
red pill, please. And here we have more screenshots of Keanu Reeves. I mean, look at this. Keanu Reeves. The latest picture of him in this screenshot is from 2011. I mean, he looks like the lookalike from the 1800s and even going all the way back to the 1500s. Amazing. Okay, on the top you have Nicholas Cage, John Travolta, and Matthew McConaughey. On the bottom, I'm not sure who these three individuals are. But these individuals are suspected of being clones of people that once walked this earth. It could be that these individuals have had their bodies cloned a few times throughout history. And it could be that these individuals are even demons themselves. They are spawn of fallen angels or spawn of demons which are the sons of the fallen angels so they might clone these individuals they send them back up above ground you see them on screen and with their talents you see these actors wasting people's time with their foolishness on screen as well as off screen this clown Actor Vince Vaughn looking like President Ben Jealous. What? I don't know, man. These clones, whatever they are, they trip me out sometimes. Here's another look alike Alec Baldwin. To your left, to your right, you have Millard Fillmore. Hmm. Again, Alec Baldwin to your right, Millick Fillmore to your left. Clones, hybrids. Somebody's been hybriding these individuals on the planet. And we know who it is. They know who they are. Here's a woman lookalike, Maggie Gyllenhaal, who looks like Rose Wilder Lane. I mean, these individuals are either traveling back in time to the past or they are nothing more than clones of individuals that once lived back in the day. Creepy stuff. Here's another look alike. And I don't even know who this celebrity is. Rupert Grint looks like David Wilkie, who once lived back in 1805. So these look alikes. Go all the way back to the 1800s. Not sure who this man is. You could look him up in Wikipedia. I really don't care. But again, goes to show you that these clones or lookalikes are copies of some of these individuals that lived back in the 1800s during that time period. And look at this fool, Eddie Murphy, to your right, to your left, Eddie Murphy again. I'm not sure how old is the picture on the left. I don't know, it could be from the 80s, right? Who knows? Might not go all the way back like we think it might. Might be a recent pick from the 80s, maybe even 70s. Who knows? But one can't help but wonder if these individuals have the technology to travel back in time or if they're just making replicas of themselves to appear later on in different timelines. Hmm. Okay, and here you have Jay-Z. Jay-Z to your left, to your right, an unknown man from Harlem, the year... 1939 they look very much alike here he is again 
the unknown man in Harlem picture taken in 1939 do they have time travel technology one has to wonder are these celebrities jumping back in time or are they cloning themselves over and over again maybe both who knows Here's another guy that might have gotten whacked and replaced with a clone, Dave Chappelle. All of a sudden, he came out looking all swole. Dave Chappelle is well known for his comedy show, The Chappelle Show. He also appeared in the movie Blue Streak. And I believe he might have gotten whacked and replaced. I mean, you do put on weight as you grow older and whatnot. But I don't know. What do you think? Remember, it was reported that supposedly he left to Africa to get away from the business industry, the entertainment industry that he was involved with because they wanted to whack him or something like that. So he fled. I don't know. They might have found him. Probably took him out and replaced him with a clone. Who knows? Okay, here's Dwayne Johnson, a.k.a. The Rock. That is his in-ring name. Of course, you got to have the symbolism in the entertainment industry. The Rock is in reference to Hamashiach himself. In scripture, he is referred to as The Rock. So they take the name or names that you read about in scripture and they use them in the entertainment industry. So, Rock to your right, that's his latest look. As you could tell, he has exaggerated body mass, looking like he just came out one of these clone centers. I mean, he looks like he's on something. He looks like he's on the juice, the needle, the pills, the roids. Whereas Rock to your left, he looks normal, like a normal human being would look. He looks healthy, with normal body mass, normal weight that a normal human being would have. And we thought Rock to the left looked jacked back in the days. Now, Rock to your right nowadays, I mean, tch, this guy looks like he spawned from one of these fallen angels or something. I mean, ridiculous, exaggerated body weight that he has on him so I believe he might have gotten whacked I don't think this is the original rock who knows but if you take a look at rock now the picture is kind of accurate might be enhanced but he is jacked he's definitely on something okay here's Tupac Supposed to have been killed and murdered back in September of 1996. Some people speculate that he faked his death, that he survived, and it was all a ploy in order to get away from the music industry. I also believe that. I believe he did fake his death and he's hiding somewhere. Some of these celebrities do that in order to get away from the limelight. So I don't believe he was cloned. I don't think he was cloned. They didn't clone him. Faked his dead. Had people believe he was killed. I believe he's still alive. Now, some individuals, the one they trust, I do believe that they'll let him lay low and still work behind the scenes. Some of them, they still make a clone of them. And while the real person is laying low, they have their clone out and about. The ones they can't trust, the celebrities they can't trust, they feel that they're going to try to back away from their oath or whatever pact they made with the realm of darkness. They kill them, send their souls to hell, and then they have their clone running around fooling people, thinking it's that person when that person has been long gone. So I don't believe Pac made the pearly gates some like to say oh he's up there I don't think so I doubt it his music for the most part was destructive his messages seemed okay at times but you know 
they're not completely useless, you know. Of course, they're going to sound intellectual, like they have some wit, because they are from these realms. This is their realm, you know. They operate in the flesh. They're not beings that could operate in a moral dimension, you know. So, yeah. Those are my two cents on this man. Okay, here's Dr. Dre. He made a video back in 2011 about an incident that happened to him in 2001. The video he made in 2011 portrays him getting into a car wreck. And this car wreck again happened in 2001, early 2001. And then the video goes into him being inside this container filled with water just like the clones that you've seen at the beginning of this video and basically letting you know in a subliminal way that he was replaced and cloned it's not the same Dre now he's all buff not the same Dre and yeah I mean when these individuals continue with their gift, artistic gifts, they don't repent. They continue to make destructive music. Their time's up. Something happens to them. They're killed off. They get whacked and they get replaced. In order to have people fooled that this individual is still alive when it's nothing more than an idol, a lifeless vessel inhabited by demons. So that's how that works. Also, Eminem, his buddy, made a video back in 2000 called The Real Slim Shady. He says in the video, and I quote the lyrics, he says, And Dr. Dre said, Nothing, you idiots. Dr. Dre is dead. He's locked in my basement. Ha ha. What does that tell you? Letting you know that Dr. Dre might have been dead even before 2001. The demon speaking through Eminem is saying, Dr. Day is dead. He's locked in my basement. Saying, well, what's the basement? Hell. He's dead. He's been replaced. So, we can't trust the information these demons give us, you know, as far as when these individuals got killed off. They might have gotten killed off early before their careers took off. Maybe as soon as it took off. They got whacked. So who knows? I mean, that's how they get their talents. These individuals, they sell their souls or they got demonic spirits working in them that help them develop their talents for nefarious purposes. And if they don't repent, they get whacked off. Some of them do come from these lineages of these fallen angels and demons. So... They just whack their own, basically. Here's Eminem. You can see the Eminem from back in the days is to your left. The current version of Eminem is to your right. They look different. Look at the eyes. What else? The eyebrows. The ears, there's no earrings. There were reports that M got into a car crash back in late 2000. He might have survived the car crash. And there was another report in 2005, 2006 that he got into another car crash. He might have not survived that one. They took him out, replaced him with a clone. It's not the same Eminem. And they leave messages in their videos. Whether they know what they're doing or not, doesn't matter. Eminem made a video about the real Slim Shady. If you take a look at the video, it's a bunch of clones that look like him. And he's rapping about him being the real Slim Shady. One has to wonder if it was designed for him to rap about that. Or was he in the know of the cloning and all of that. He was asked back in 2003 that what does he think about cloning and he was saying I hope 
they do clone me. I hope it's real. We need to get on with this cloning. Because he was saying he could sure use a clone to help him out with all the work he was doing. You know, writing lyrics, producing, acting, and all of that. And some speculate that the first time a clone of Eminem was used was in the movie 8 Mile. So, who knows? He might be alive and he might be using clones to help him out with his work so he could work behind the scenes. He might be one of these individuals that's from the lineage of these fallen angels, these demons. We don't know that. But for sure, he left uh, messages in his videos, kind of like Tupac. You know, he made a video about Stan. Where is this individual that's obsessed with him? Gets into a car crash, dies. It came out a few days before he got into his car crash or the car crash that was never reported. They tried to report it, but it never made the news a few days later. I don't know if they were planning to make it seem like he died and then just keep his music going to make money off of it. Well, in fact, he was alive. Might have been a hoax. Might have been real. Who knows? We don't trust these individuals. Anybody that's making garbage music that is poisoning society, promoting violence, drugs, sex, all of that, immorality, unchastity, anybody that does that, he's your enemy, you know, going totally opposite of the creator in Hamashiach's way. So this individual, you need to mark him. He's no good to society, so... Yeah, whether he's alive or dead, whether they clone him or not, sometimes these individuals do get whacked and replaced. The ones they trust, they just put them to the side. They go lay low, and they have their clones do the work for them so they can work behind the scenes. So either way, these individuals develop talents. They take them to new heights. They use them for wrong things. They don't repent. And then they find out what they got themselves into. And once you climb the ladder... You find these devils out on the top of it. And you find yourself in a world of hurt. So, yeah. He's definitely cloned, replaced. The messages are in his music. The clone talks about, raps about, getting into a car crash, being rebuilt. Probably replaced. Who knows what they're doing with these individuals. But this is another individual that is shrouded with mystery and definitely not the same Eminem if you take a look into his story concerning his rise to fame and whatnot. Again, Eminem, to your left, the real Slim Shady, to your right, the clone with the demon inside. I mean, completely different persons. And like I said, in the Dave Chappelle one, as you get older, you're supposed to put on weight. You're not supposed to lose weight. Look at his skin. Synthetic. Fake. And not only that, look at the eyes. Blue eyes. The other one has gray-green eyes. Like grayish eyes, greenish eyes. Like dark green or gray-green. So they don't have the same type of eyes. The pupils look dilated on the M&M to your right. And all of a sudden, he came back wearing black, wrapping the Baphomet and Satanic New World Order and all of that. I mean, it's not the same M&M. Clearly, not the same M. And, you know, some people might say, oh, well, he was, he was on drugs. You know, he lost a lot of weight. Man. He was supposed to have been rehabilitated for several years now. He was fine. He's fine, supposedly. Why is he still skinny? Again, as you grow older, you're supposed to put on weight, not lose weight. And if you're not on drugs now, then where's the weight? You know, it's a clone. Don't believe it, whether the real M is still alive or not. Whether he knew about it and then they turned on him, who knows? But when the Almighty says your time is up, they could take you out, you know. So whether he knew about the cloning or not, whether he's still alive or not, doesn't matter. His music is poison, and it's unfortunate, but it is what it is. Hey, 
here's another individual, Michael Jackson, who is suspected of being a clone. I don't know about all that. He might have just gotten a bunch of surgery on his face. That could be a possibility, but again, who knows? Might have gotten whacked and replaced or might have gotten cloned or somebody else might have stepped up and he might have been told to, you know, lay low. We don't know that. But, yeah, he's also a sellout. So, yeah, don't feel sorry for them. Michael, there's pictures of him throwing up the triple six, the 666 hand sign, the OK sign. So, yeah, he's part of the club. Here's Michael Jackson again. To your left, you have a feral statue that looks like Michael Jackson. So these individuals are getting cloned. Demons are jumping inside of them. And who knows, these demons might have existed back in the day as well. So they just pop up time and time again with new bodies, new names. But we might be dealing with the same players, so to speak. He is Janet Jackson. To your left, you have the Egyptian statue. Looks just like her too. Must run in the family, I guess. Here is Queen Latifah's look-alike. To your right, to your left, Queen Latifah herself. Not sure what year is the picture from that you see on the right, but they very much look alike. Here's Lil' Kim, the female rapper. I mean, she looks totally different now than what she used to look like back then. The current version of Lil' Kim is to your right, the old version is to your left. See that? Big difference. Might not even be the same person, might have got whacked and cloned. That's what happens when you sell your soul to the realm of darkness. And this is what happens when you just carry on with whatever talent you're given or you're born with. And you develop it to promote garbage. In this case, this woman was using her rap to promote whoredom. Drugs and immorality. So she paid the price. Here's Kim Kardashian. Some say she was cloned and replaced. I don't know, it could be that she just had a lot of surgeries, so she might look kind of different now. But who knows for sure. Here's Mrs. Kardashian again, looking completely different than she did when she was younger. But of course, with age, we all look different. Plus, she had many plastic surgeries, so who knows? It's hard to say if she was really cloned and replaced or if that's just her looking different today. Here's Taylor Swift to your left. To your right, Zena LaVey, a Satanist. They do look alike. Maybe they have the same DNA. Who knows? Okay, here are screenshots, mugshots of various celebrities that are suspected of being clones, hybrids, robotoids, doppelgangers, doubles, replicas, duplicates, so on and so forth. They like to throw these freaks around. So it's just as much fun exposing them when you find out what it is they're doing. And they are in all fields. They are assigned careers. A lot of them, again, are actors, singers, dancers, musicians, sports figures, TV hosts, comedians, politicians. I mean, they're everywhere. They've infiltrated society and they're in positions of power in order to influence the population 
and in order to lead them astray with lies and all of their foolishness. So their talents are only good for nefarious activities and nothing more. And trust me, they have nothing worthwhile to say. And you don't want to get caught following these clowns when the rain comes, when judgment comes. Scripture speaks about these clones, these hybrids and robotoids. Savior said that at the end of the age, he will separate the wheat from the tares. The wheat represent real humans, his people. The tares are these hybrids, these clones and robotoids. Okay, sports figures. Let's talk about them for a bit. Celebrity sports athletes, many of them that you see on TV, they come from corrupt blood lineages that you can read about in scripture. Some of these individuals can trace the lineage all the way back to the pre-Adamic man mentioned in Genesis chapter 1 verses 26 and 27. Others of these individuals can trace themselves back to one of the sons of Noah, Ham. The lineage of Cam is loaded with intermingling between themselves and the offspring of the fallen angels, the hybrids, the giants. It's no coincidence why these individuals that you see on TV in the sports field, they have these oversized, muscled, tough-skinned bodies. It's because it was passed down to them through the corrupt DNA that is in them. And here you see them throwing up their New World Daughter Illuminati, Freemasonic hand signs, letting you know what side they represent. The sports arena is nothing more than a glorified freak show. Basketball, football, baseball, hockey, soccer, Golf, track and field, wrestling, mixed martial arts, NASCAR. All of these various sports are loaded with clones and hybrids. They're nothing more than glorified idols. They're introduced to the population to entertain them. And they want to act like these abilities are given by the Creator or that their hard work and dedication got them to where they're at. That's all BS. These individuals are pushed to the top according to the powers that shouldn't be. Most sports are rigged especially when you get at the higher level. So yeah, these individuals have an advantage over normal human beings because of their size and strength, which is non-organic. And here you see them with the uh, numbers that if you add them up you get the number six letting you know again that they are part of the cult you see the number six they like to wear that they want to represent the realm of darkness some of these individuals even take up the names of pagan gods and they use those names of these false gods as their nicknames in order to get to where they at they got to commit murder rituals and be involved in all kinds of abominations that are forbidden in scripture so on top of being hybrids with these muscled, 
oversized, tough-skinned bodies. On top of that, they conjure up demonic spirits that get inside them, that help them develop their abilities. So they're on superroids. I mean, these individuals are born on roids, so to speak. They come out of the wound on that juice. So they're supercharged. This is also why you see them being seven feet, eight feet tall. You know, back in the days, they were even taller and stronger and more jacked than you see them on TV. Because humanity has decreased in size as time has gone by. But they're still stronger and taller. That's their build. They're always going to be bigger than a normal human being. That's what I'm trying to say. So yeah, don't get caught up following these freaks. Now, the sports field is mostly dominated by b black athletes. You do have white athletes, but that's not where they thrive. The different genre of sports are mostly dominated by black sports figures. And again, it's nothing more than a waste of time and energy. Don't worship these clowns. Star Wars Episode 2 had a strange title to it. It was called Attack of the Clones, letting you know that they are cloning people. It's a war against clones. Attack of the Clones. Star Wars. It's a subliminal hit. Here's another Star Wars movie with a title in reference to clones. Star Wars, The Clone Wars, a children's movie that came out a few years ago. They also made a TV series about this and a video game as well. It's more subliminal messages from the other side letting you know what they're doing. You know you hit an all-time low when you have your enemies cluing you in on what they're doing. The population is sound asleep. They are in some kind of trance, some kind of spell or strong delusion. You need to wake up. We are at war with clones. Soulless vessels that house demons. And you see them all over TV. They are idols. Breathless. They don't have a soul. Remember scripture says that at the end of the age, the wheat and the tares will be separated. The tares are those that are soulless. Spawn of devils, fallen angels, they're going to get burned up. The disciples told Savior, do you want us to go and get rid of them? He said, no, lest you get rid of the wheat along with them. I'll let my angels take care of that. This was in reference to soulless humans, demons, clones. Here you have Yoda inside a water tank, a clone tank. I'm not sure where this is from, if it's from a movie, TV series, video game, who knows. But they're, again, they're telling you what they're doing. It's just that the majority of people are sound asleep. And they don't believe the stuff they see on TV is real, if they only knew. You could find all kinds of demonic entities of different races below ground. Working side by side with human clones and non-clones. They are conducting their wicked activities deep on the ground. Where people won't be able to spot them so easily. But yeah, they're there. It's called the hollow earth. Also the ETs, the grace, they're also involved in the cloning. In fact, they help with the procedures. They've been known to extract DNA from humans. They're nothing more than lower class demons. They work side by side with the humans. 
the ones that have given up their rights to the realm of darkness. So they help in the cloning process as well. Here is Christina Aguilera's album cover titled Bionic Bioengineering, letting you know that they are creating robotoids as well, not just clones and hybrids, non-organic humans, but robots. Think of the movie Terminator, Rise of the Machine, more subliminals, letting you know what they're doing. Who knows if Christina Aguilera was replaced with a robotoid or if she's still alive while the robotoid is running around out and about. But yeah, this is what they're doing. Here's the movie poster for the movie Terminator 3, Rise of the Machines, starring Arnold Schwarzenegger. They're letting you know that they are creating robotoids on their ground as well, not just clones and hybrids. And some of these robotoids are even on your local news. They're giving you the news. So, yeah. They got all kinds of works going on underground. Here's an image of the movie iRobot starring Will Smith. More subliminals. They're creating robotoids. What are you trying to tell us, Will? Are you trying to say I, meaning you, are a robotoid? Okay, here's further confirmation that they are creating robotoids. This is from the Illuminati card game, again, that came out back in 1995. It says, Robot Sea Monsters. What does that tell you? They're creating robotoids. And if they're creating sea monsters made out of metals and all that, then look out. Seriously. Here's another Illuminati card confirming that they are creating robotoids. The card says Cyborg Soldiers. Again, just think of Terminator, Rise of the Machines. Think of Christina Aguilera's album cover. Think of iRobot, the previous Illuminati card that you saw. I mean, this is what they're doing. Their nefarious activities go beyond what most people think. How's this for a subliminal message? I mean, they're telling you right to your face. Human cloning is not closer than you think. It's been here. And it's not just a possibility. It is very much a reality, as I said before. This cover here is from Time Magazine. It's a subliminal. Letting the reader know that they're cloning people. Okay, here's another subliminal hit. A cloned sheep. Again, the sheep in scripture are in reference to the Creator's people. Here it says in this Time Magazine cover, Will there ever be another you? Special report on cloning. They're letting you know what they're doing. Do you have the eyes to see and the mind to understand? Are you listening to me? Here's a turtle with two heads. Not sure if that's just a mishap or was this turtle messed with. But point is, they're messing with the animals as well. More of their wicked activities. It's a rat with an ear on its back. Sick. Here it is again, pig with the face of a human. Bioengineering, DNA splicing, all that kind of freaky stuff takes place on their ground as well as above ground in some instances, but mostly deep on the ground. They mess with the animals and they send them back up and you find these freaks running around. 
Here's a human-animal hybrid. They splice the DNA of a human with that of an animal. Looks like some kind of troll. And he was found. Not sure if it's alive or killed. But looks like he was probably found in some part in Africa. I'm not sure. But yeah, this is what they're doing. All kinds of sick stuff. Okay, here's some screenshots of animals that might have had their DNA altered with that of humans or other animals. More DNA splicing. Yes, they're messing with the animals, like I said. Now, some of these pictures aren't legit. Some of them are false. But there are some that are real, and you have to use discernment in order to distinguish which are fake and which are not. I mean, but the point of this is that they're messing with the DNA of animals and humans, and you must be aware of that. That's a reality. That's a fact. So, never mind the pics. The pics just help. But, yeah, this is what they're doing. Conducting all these abominable activities. And this is what gets them in trouble. You know, they start messing around with DNA. They start hanking with people, cloning them, messing with the animals. And it gets them in trouble time and time again. You know, they just can't sit still and behave themselves. All that knowledge they have, they feel they need to put it to use and... This is what happens when these idiots are in charge. You have nothing but buffoonery going on due to their nefarious activities. And one can't help but wonder, are these beings sane in the head? I don't think so. I think they lost their sanity a long time ago. They know how to act, of course, so they act pious, they act like they're normal. These entities are just gone, reprobate, messed up in the head. Okay, so nothing but monstrosities, all right? Sick stuff. Okay, what you're looking at on screen here is one of the creations of the fallen angels, which can be traced back to Genesis chapter 1 verses 26 and 27. This here is Homo erectus and how he came about is the fallen angels mixed their DNA with that of a primate and they produced this humanoid here and you can see here he is in his early stages. They had time to work on him obviously so he doesn't look the same. He looks more human like now and he has a dark complexion to him, as you can see. Scripture refers to these individuals as the beasts of the field. The humanoids. Mentioned in Genesis 1, 26 and 27. Very important that you understand that the Adam of Genesis chapter 1 is not the same as the Adam of Genesis chapter 2. That's why the creation order doesn't make sense when you read Genesis 1 and 2. It's not talking about the same Adam. This is pre-Adamic man. Alright, and this here is another creation of the fallen angels. He came about the same way as Homo erectus. Fallen angels mix their DNA with that of a primate monkey and they produce this creature called Neanderthal. As you can see, he has lighter skin than Homo erectus. This would be Homo erectus' counterpart. And this individual is in its early stages here. Just a humanoid one of the humanoids which is mentioned again in Genesis chapter 1 verses 26 and 27 when properly interpreted 
That verse states that it was the Elohim that created the pre-Adamic man because the Adam of Genesis chapter 1 is not the same as the Adam of Genesis chapter 2. You must understand that. That's why the creation order doesn't make sense when you read Genesis chapter 1 and chapter 2 because it's not talking about the same Adam. And here's one more of the creation of the fallen angels, Cro-Magnon. As you can see, the skull of this individual looks very high up. Rigid eyebrows. And he's part of the primate family. All these three creatures are made out of primate monkey DNA spliced with the fallen angels DNA. That's how this individual became more human-like as far as its appearance goes. These are the hybrids mentioned in Genesis chapter 1 verses 26 and 27. This is their creature they created and enhanced of course, there were other hybrids, such as the intermingling between the fallen angels in the second incursion during the times of Yarit, during the days of Enoch and Noah, when they made it with human women, they produced the demons. In a sense, these beasts of the field, which are referred to in scripture as these humanoids, these individuals guess could be considered in a sense a type of demon okay now we're going to take a look at some scripture that talks about these fallen angels and their nefarious activities this is from Romans chapter 1 verses 21 to 32 now if you decipher these verses here these verses will let you know that this is talking about the fallen angels in their rebellion, when they started hanking with animals and humans. Now, this is coded in here, in these verses. It goes all the way back to when they first started messing with the creations that they were creating. Beginning with their human, mentioned in... Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26. It says in verse 21 of Romans chapter 1 that because when they knew the Creator, they glorified Him not as a Creator, neither were thankful. Talking about the fallen angels. They became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Verse 22. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. They have all this knowledge, all this power. They thought very highly of themselves. And now they become a bunch of fools. Verse 23. And they changed the glory of the uncorruptible creator into an image made like to corruptible man. They exchanged their glory, their glorified spirit bodies. They exchanged that, which is in a way an image of the creator and his uncorruptibility. They traded that for an image like to corruptible man, these bodies that we have, these lower dimensions that are all about the flesh, they like that, so they exchange their glorious bodies for these bodies that are corruptible. Again, they became fools. And also it says here that they exchange their glorified bodies like the uncorruptible Yah for the image of a corruptible man and birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things they exchange that just so they can mess with the animals the beasts the creeping things all these made out of flesh and blood mortal bodies so there it is keep reading okay we just read verse 23 verse 24 says wherefore Yah also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts they were lusting for these fleshly bodies, these lower realms. Verse 24, in order to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Homoing it out, so to speak, right? Again, 
devious sexual practices they were conducting between themselves because Yah gave them up. He wasn't restraining their cravings. He said, fine, you want to row in the mud? Go ahead. Verse 25, who changed the truth of the Creator into a lie. They're liars. Fallen angels are liars. And their offspring, the demons, likewise. See that? They changed the truth of the Creator into a lie and worshipped and served the creature. What creature were they serving? The one they created all the way back in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26. Pre-Adamic man, the hybrid, the clonatoid. They worshipped him more than the Creator who is blessed forever. So be it. Verse 26, for this cause, Yah gave them up unto vile affections. Again, he let them do what they wanted to do. He said, enough is enough. For even their women, their creatures that are sporting women vessels, even they change the natural use of the man into that which is against nature. Women with women. Lesbianism. Again, DNA going all haywire. Verse 27, And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust toward one another, Man with man, working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of the error which was meet homosexuality. And this is where you get the homo movement from the fallen angels and their Frankenstein creations. Verse 28, it says, And even as they did not like to retain Yah in their knowledge, they're all worried with their creation, that's what they're preoccupied with. All their little fancy, fancy technological advancements, their Frankenstein creations, their DNA splicing, that's all they're concerned about. So they did not like to retain Yah in their mind, so Yah gave them over to a reprobate mind. He gave up these beings to a rejected mind, a retarded mind. They're not all there. And they were doing those things which are not convenient. Verse 28, we just read. Now, turning over to verse 29. This is what it says. They were filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, whoredom, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy. They're murderers. They like to debate. They like to deceive. Malignity, whisperers. Verse 30, backbiters. Talking behind your back. Haters of Yah. They became haters of the Creator. They're spiteful, proud, proud in their creations, their, their advancements. Proud in vain. Boasters, they like to boast. Inventors of evil things. They're the ones inventing evil, the fallen angels. They're the ones responsible for these monstrosities going on on the planet. And they like to hide themselves in scripture by making it seem like this only has to do with men. No, this is talking about them. You got to understand that. You know, they're the problem. Okay? So they became inventors of evil things and disobedient to parents. You say, who are the parents? The Heavenly Father and the Heavenly Mother. You know? So they became rebels. They don't honor their celestial parents. Verse 31. They have no understanding, or so they think they do. They don't understand the righteousness of Yah. That's why they're always arguing against it. Verse 31, they don't have no understanding. They're agreement breakers. They broke the agreement. That's why they got kicked out of heaven. They don't have natural affections. They don't have the full range of emotions that a normal human would have. They don't have natural affection. They don't know what it is. They're implacable and unmerciful. Mad beings. Unmerciful. Brutal. Verse 32, who knowing the judgment of the Creator... That they which commit such things are worthy of death. And no, not death as in Satan. That's another name for Satan. No, worthy of death. Being taken out completely. See? They that commit such, thing, such things are worthy of death. In every sense of the word. Not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. So they like people that get involved with their nefarious activities. And that take up. Their side. So, yeah, this is talking about the fallen angels. It's right here in scripture. 
It takes you all the way back to when they first created their abominable creature in Genesis 1, 26. That scripture references as being the beast of the field. That's what these clones are. These hybrids. Beasts of the field. They're not animals. They're human vessels. They're uh, lacking a soul. They don't have the full range of emotions that a normal human would have. They're not all there. Just like their creators, the fallen angels. Okay, this is Deuteronomy 27.15, King James Version. It says, Cursed be the man that maketh any graven or molten image, an abomination unto the Almighty, the work of the hands of the craftsmen, and put it in a secret place. And all the people shall answer and say, So be it. Now, keep in mind that a clone is nothing more than an image, right? It's an abomination unto the Creator. It is a work of the hands of man and the fallen angels and the demons. They are the craftsmen. And they put it, these clones, in a secret place. What secret place? Deep underground bases. Their cloning centers are located there. Follow me. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? It's right there. This here is Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 16. It says, Lest you corrupt yourselves and make ye yourselves a graven image, the similitude of any figure, the likeness of male or female. And what are these clones? Male and female. Graven images. There it is. It's in Scripture. The Old Testament as well as the New Testament. These verses are not just speaking about statues. This is referring to their nefarious activities as well. The cloning. The cloning of males and females. Graven images. Okay, here is Yeshaya, that's Isaiah, chapter 44, and verse 9, it says, How foolish are those who manufacture idols? Again, a clone can be considered an idol. It's lifeless. It doesn't have a soul. These prized objects are really worthless. Again, the cloning is very popular today with these heathens. The people who worship idols or these clones don't know this, so they are all put to shame. There it is, in Scripture, Old Testament, New Testament. And you can read it in all the different versions that are out there, and they're not going to change much. Here's another verse from Yeshaya, that's I say in English. Chapter 42 and verse 17, it says, They shall be turned back. They shall be greatly ashamed. Them that trust in graven images or clones, that say to these images, You are our gods. See, Scripture even tells you, Quit worshiping these clowns. Y'all gotta throw these damn hybrids out of your heads, out of your lives, out of your minds. Let these... You know what? Go buy some rocks and win. Die. Ignore them. Fudge them. Quit supporting all their BS. You know, they're doing what they're supposed to do. Make stupid music. Make dumb music. Make stupid movies. Dumb movies. You know, act like clowns on TV. With the little sports, recreational sports and all that. See, y'all got to wake up. Here's another verse from scripture that might be in reference to human cloning. This is from Jude chapter 1 and verse 9. It speaks about the archangel Michael contending with the devil about the body of Moses. Meaning the devil could have possibly been trying to duplicate Moses. He was probably trying to clone him. But the Heavenly Father said, no, you can't do that. And he said, all right. Because he's the one in charge. See, the Heavenly Father is not going to let one of his own get cloned without his permission. 
especially a renowned figure and man such as Moses. But I believe the devil may have been trying to do just that, duplicate Moses. So you see, it's all throughout Scripture. And if you pay attention to this verse, it says that they were contending and disputing about the body of Moses, not the soul. So, DNA altering, human cloning and probing, bioengineering, this was taking place way back when. Even before the days of Moses, during the times of Noah, and even before that, like I said, this goes all the way back to Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 and 27. Okay, and in closing, I'm going to read a few verses from Jeremiah chapter 10, verses 14 and 15, King James Version. Verse 14 reads, Every man is brutish in his knowledge. Every founder is confounded by the graven image or the clone. For his clone or molten image is falsehood. There is no breath in him. A clone is lifeless it has no soul it has a demon in it verse 15 they are vanity and the work of errors in the time of their visitation they shall perish again i gotta keep going back to the parable of the wheat and the tares it's in reference to these demons these fake non-organic humans hybrids Okay, so this wraps up the video for cloning, hybrids, and robotoids. I hope it was informative. Again, I wish you nothing but blessings. May the Heavenly Father, Yahuwah, and His Son, Emmanuel, keep you, guide you, protect you, deliver you, help you in your walk. May he lead you into all truth. May he seal you with the seals that you need in these end days in order to overcome. May you receive the Ruach HaKodesh inside of you. May he place his law, statutes, and commandments in your heart so that you could walk in them. And nothing but love. Till next time. Shalom.